police decided to bring Diane Downs for another interview. Detectives are no longer being Mr. Nice Guy. They're playing hardball. OK, we're now back on tape. And at 16, 11 hours, present here is Elizabeth Diane Downs. You know what I love? I love when a perpetrator changes their story. It was the time that we decided to take her on and seriously challenge her on the inconsistencies in her story. Diane, your story stinks. This whole thing is stunk. It's done from the beginning. I'm fine. We no longer have some sort of by the chance, happenstance, horrific crime on the side of a road. We have a conspiracy. The story had morphed into two suspects, and they referred to her by name. And then somehow she said, I think it was somebody that knew me. You've changed it by saying that this guy knew you now, he knew your tattoo, he knows about you, uh, he threatened you. That's a hell of a change from what you said the first time around. There was no reason for you not to say that at the very beginning. OK. No reason in your mind. I understand when witnesses or victims add on to their story. They tell you something they've never said before. But to change your story, that is a horse of a different color. And I have one man sitting here looking at me with a face of stone. I have another man over there smoking a cigarette 90 miles an hour and tasting. You're not my best buddies. I wouldn't go drinking with you, that's for sure. Do you feel guilty about what you did, Diane? No, because I didn't do anything wrong. And I wouldn't change it if I could. My kids and I always took the back roads. One of the keys in interviewing somebody is you got to keep the tension up. Stress them out to the point where they eventually get to the truth, which clearly does not happen with Diane, but that's the goal. I'm trying to find out who shot your kids. And if it was and you, I'm that's doing the way what it goes. I can. Fine, I, mean, I agree. You, you're going to take the fall for it. If it I wasn't agree. you, then uh, I'm going to quit this job. The interview went for approximately two hours. And towards the end there, her frustration level was rising. I'll make you a deal, OK? Next time I remember something, yeah. You. you can find the guy yourself, because I know I didn't do it. And you can chase your little tails for the next 20,000 years, if that's what it takes. You you're don't real, like my help, you can it. You're real confident in yourself, aren't you? I know that I didn't do it. Diane thought that she was too smart for us, and that there wasn't anything that could trip her up. Come on, Diane. It's your turn at bat. Since you guys seem to think that I should have brought Diane with me, I will get it myself, because I know who did it. You do know who did yes, it? Yes, I do. I damn sure do. You know him by yes, name? I yes, I do. Yeah. You saw him shoot your kids? Yep. It's pretty important. And I saw him grab my arm and yank my arm out and shoot my arm and say, now try to get away with it. And I'm leaving, because I know who did it. Bye. The time is now 17.46, and Diane is just a part of the office. We're concluding the tape. She ended up storming out. There was enormous public pressure to arrest Diane Downs. People no longer bought her story. This is the days before the internet, but believe me, there's a tremendous amount of pressure being placed, especially on the sheriff, to make an arrest. There was no arrest for a long time because the DA in this case really wanted to talk to the only surviving witness who was old enough to tell them what happened. The weight on the arrest was a result of wanting Christy to be healthy enough to testify. After the stroke, she had difficulty speaking. Time is on our side, especially with the recovery of Christy. Let's not trade certainty of a conviction just for the expediency of getting an arrest. At first, Christy couldn't speak at all, and then she was afraid to talk. A therapist working with Christy asked her to write down on a piece of paper the name of the person who had shot her. He said, we'll put it in an envelope, and then you can put it in my fireplace and we'll burn it. And that went on for a very long time. And every time she'd write a name down, then she'd throw it in the fireplace. When she was ready to talk about it, they would open it. And when they did, of course, the, the slip of paper said, 
my mom. Diane was indicted, and once that indictment came down, it was time to, to pay her a visit. Diane is arrested on February 28th, 1984, nine months after she shot her children. Seeing Diane immediately after the arrest, uh, and even there were uh, photographs of her, and she was acting like this at the time, looking adoringly at the deputies who were escorting her. Didn't seem shocked, didn't seem traumatized. She still was bathing in the spotlight that was afforded to her by all this. She's been out free for so long. She was an uncharged suspect for nine months. It was like something out of a bad made-for-TV movie. You have the defendant in the murder trial walking in very determined to prove she's innocent and very, very pregnant.